That's a Cornel West body, Vivek Ram Swami, on my show. And I'm going to take full credit for it because, well, I asked Dr. Cornel West this question, and that's what got him going. Dr. West, have you ever been on the Bill Maher show? Oh, many, many, many times. Okay. It's even worse. It's just going to elect a Republican. So this is the world that we live in. Yes. People do have to make compromises, That's even true. good people. But no? there's a difference between, and you know, based on your wonderful Ivy League training at Cornell <laughs> University. <laughs> Prudentia. One of the few colleges you have Prudentia. not taught Prudentia. Right. Phronesis. Practical wisdom is yeah. not opportunistic judgment. Just like pragmatism is not opportunism. If you make wise judgments relative to constraints, principles can be compromised, but the principles are still retained. Once you have very little principles, it's all about power, all about manipulation, all about spectacle, all about image. That's very much what American politics is about these days in both parties. Spectacle, superficial. And so when you say, well, if they're hypocrites, we got to allow for the hypocrisy. No, not at all. He needs to bring you back. Because he just had on that right wing, that, uh, the new guy, the uh, Vivek Ramaswamy. He was oh. just on his show. His his podcast is uh, Random, Club Random with Bill Maher. He's got a separate show. And oh, it's, okay. it's sort of like his personal podcast. Oh, I got you. I yeah. got you. And, and no, part Brother of, Bill, but he, he, he's been very kind to me over, over the years. We had about a five, five year gap, but he had me on, I think, last June. Okay. But I think he's made contact, so I, I might be on. But that, that, I, that would be amazing. Vivek is making a lot of noise in Republican circles, right? And right. he's a, he's like he's very young, like thirty eight. You know, he's talking like we're in a post racial society, and you know we need to stop looking backwards. We need to look forward. Different standards of law, like when you have that look the other way and sweep it under the rug. That's when you actually get an unfair state that can target people for saying the wrong thing thinking the wrong thing. Oh, I don't like what you did here. Right. I got to throw the well, statute and, book at you and then we're going to do something where we otherwise don't charge and it. And historically, That's what racism hid, yeah, behind, yeah, historically. hid behind states' rights. Oh, absolutely. I mean, yeah, this, was, this was a, this was part of our past. Right. And today, I think it, right. you know, political discrimination, I think is the new equivalent of unfairness in the law that we've seen for racism in maybe decades and centuries past. Well, I will say this where I think we're, fairly in agreement on. I keep saying my mantra is let's live in the year we're living in. Yeah. Because so many people seem, seem to, on the left, this is a left thing, they seem to want to insist on having our deplorable past mm -hmm. permanently stand in for our much improved present, which doesn't mean there isn't work to be done. There certainly are still racists in America and racism. But I feel like we are very often not treating it like, oh, this is 2023 now, and this is where we are. This is That's the right. work that has to be done. But let's not be chasing these phantoms of racism that aren't the parts that exist anymore. Yeah, and, and I think that we can celebrate that. Yeah, we should. That, I think that we should Progressive celebrate that. Progressive should. Right? I think that we all should. We are all, I mean, in some ways, I am pro-progress. <laughs> the brother is very eloquent. He's very uh, educated very literate, and people love the way that he uh, he puts his thoughts together, but I think he's off base when it comes to actual social issues in America. But you know the irony is, I, you know, our brother went to Harvard, went to Yale Law, that he wouldn't even be in the country if it wasn't for the Black Freedom Movement that generated the 1965 Immigration Act. Between 1924 and 65, it was the white supremacist immigration policy that didn't allow folk outside of Europe, for the most part, even come into the country. Few exceptions in, 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 in the Western Hemisphere. So he comes as a new immigrant. And he gonna come here with all of these definitive statements about X. I mean, he got to write his opinion, but I'm just putting it in context. I said, come on, young brother. You need a little bit more humility, man. You wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for Martin and Fannie Lou and the others bringing a critique to bear the white supremacy. So you, so we, Bring the critique to bear the white supremacy. Black people die for the movement to allow for the Immigration Act. And he gets there and he say what? Post-racial. What I tell some people, well, you know, often friends on the left is, have we been hypocritical for most of our national history? Yes, we have. But our worst hypocrisies. Hypocritical, you mean like all men are created equal? Yeah, that we don't yes. live up. We have, and the point I was getting to is those right. hypocrisies are our best evidence 
that we have ideals at all. Good. His parents, his parents able to come and then allow him the gang access to the resources there of the go. empire and so but i mean you know he's got a, he's got a right to be wrong i'll fight for his right to be wrong but we got to point it out and we got to point out the degree to which you know his own his own personal ambition i hear somebody say he's been messing with that genius from detroit what's his name my eminem it's the eminem was one of the vanilla oh, yeah. geniuses in the black created art form of hip-hop but no eminem without dr dre and the others he'd be the first to say that but so that he's a, you know, he he's been shaped by our own culture. You see, when he when he's when he's quoting Eminem, or when he had his little group at Harvard and so forth, he became a participant and wonderfully so within the black cultural world, because hip hop was one of the great artistic creations of black folk that flows from spirituals and gospels through jazz and rhythm and blues and, and a whole host of other forms and genres. Absolutely. But as you say, we just got to keep the brother honest. We got to tell the truth about the brother and show the way in which he is now tied to a or chooses to be part of a Republican Party that uh, has never in the last oh, hundred and some years been concerned about poor and working people, let alone black people. There it is. To borrow a phrase from Dr. Cornell West, Vivek needs to get off the crack pipe. Can you imagine sitting up here with Bill Maher? These two sitting up here talking about, oh, but the ideals, the fact that America had ideals. That's enough. Black people couldn't get the right to vote in this country until about 1970. And it's like, well, yeah, we lied. We were hypocritical as hell. After slavery, they terrorized black people for over 100 years. And it's like, well, that's okay, though, because we were trying to live up to our ideals. At least we had ideals. At least we were living up to the lie that we were lying about the, the rights that we said we gave people. And it wasn't an ideal. They never included black people in the Constitution. Black people were not considered humans. We're three-fifths of a human being. So that wasn't an ideal. Get what I'm saying? And Bill Maher sat right there, Mr. Liberal, Mr. Mr. whatever he is now. He sat right there agreeing with this guy, like, you got a good point. You got a good point, Vivek. You got a good point. Yeah, this is something. You got something there. If Vivek's up there with his plastic face and his phony, whatever that is, his Ivy League BS. You know, when I think that, when I think that, when I think you know, and I was sitting down with the barbershop around these people I wouldn't normally be around in a place I would never be in. These people also wanted to close the border. Yeah, that's because black people get treated like garbage. We're the first fired, last hired. Because we're 13% of the population and we own 2% of the wealth. So, we can't lose any more ground or we'll be extinct. That's why. It's not for the same reasons that a lot of the white folks are pissed about the southern border. But he goes on and on and on about this stuff. And it's just Vivek Ramswamy, him and Tim Scott are the same person. One's a little bit darker and one's a little bit older and one's got bald head. But they're the same person. They want to run on this idealistic BS. Yes, black people fell for that with Obama back in 2008, but we're not going to fall for it again. Vivek and Tip Scott could take their fake optimism, kiss on the butt of white supremacy, open up a flea market. And Tip Scott could keep on pretending that being the only black senator in the Republican Party is an accident. Like, oh my God, how'd that happen? I just happen to be black. As if there isn't a problem with race throughout this country. Not because we want it to be, but because it is. But because it is. Because it is. Cheesecakes got cheese in them. That's why they call cheesecakes. America has racism. So that's called racist America. That every piece of the cake has cheese in it. But it's got so much cheese in it that we're going to call it a cheesecake. Same thing with apple pie. It's enough apple in the pie to call it an apple pie. Whole thing's that apples. It's got other stuff in it. It's got eggs. It's got cinnamon. It's got flour. Maybe some nutmeg or something. I don't know what you put in it. It's not all apples. But there's enough apples in it to call it apple pie, isn't it? But see, not to Vivek Ramswamy and not to Tim Scott. And that's why I can't say the Republicans. So people say, Tim Black, won't you roll with the Republicans sometimes? I can't. They deny reality. 
A little bit worse than the Democrats in that aspect. The, the Democrats will admit that we have these social issues, but they won't do anything really to fix them. They'll just go, hey, there's a social issue. And then they'll exploit it for votes, but they won't fix it. Because if they fix it, I guess we don't need them anymore. And then what will they do? Lose. Because 55 to 60% of white American votes Republican every cycle, no matter who's running. So if you're following Dr. Cornell West and you want to stay up to date on all his comments and goings and speeches and the campaign as it gets off the ground, subscribe to this channel now. Become a subscriber of the Tim Black channel. No, brother. And this mm -hmm. is very important because you've been so courageous, man. You've been so inspiring and you've been so consistent with your integrity and your truth telling that, uh, uh, that I wanted this to be the, the first show that I could talk, man, it's something about Tim Black to me. <laughs> it's something about Brother Tim Black. I don't know if it's Maryland. I know the great Marlana Curtis Kirk, Kirk <laughs> come out of Maryland. I know Frederick Douglass come out of Maryland. I don't know what it is about the soil, but it's that deep, deep love for the people. And remember, someone tells you now, Tim Black, it ain't time for Dr. Cornell West. We got to be afraid of Trump. Look him in the eye and say, it's a new day.